put on uh, the do I need the headphones or no? Uh, you don't really. I take calls. You don't really have cameras on the I'm going to get as much information as possible. Uh, call the ball, but. Standard question. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Basic stuff, let folks know what your thoughts are. Um, now, we had uh, just the patients that tuning in. We had Norman on last week, and then. I see Clay Griner, he will be on Thursday at 7.30 in case you'll be on this end. So. Um, and I, I'm not sure how to gauge it. I know I was looking at early vote totals. <clears throat> I think 182 yesterday, I saw in the Lee County, I know it's smaller than us, but they said, oh, we're elated. We had 31 people vote today. I thought, wow, we were, that sounds pretty good. Then. We're doing pretty good. So. This Tuesday morning, brought to you by the good folks at Southern Vane and Laser Center and the Valdosta Toyota. We had our first day of early voting yesterday here in Lowndes County. 182 people voted, 161 voted there, and 21 other ones by mail. So we're off to a good start. Three weeks of early voting will conclude uh, let's see, May 16th, which is a Friday, and of course, uh, the election day on the primary day on May 20th. And, um, District 5, this is a special election on the Lowndes County Commission to fill the uh, term, uh, the unexpired term of John Page, who has uh, decided to run for state senate. And one of the candidates, Gretchen Gorman, joins us this morning. And uh, Gretchen, good morning. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for having me, Chris. God, always good to see you. And uh, as we tell everybody, thank you for putting yourself up for public service. That is a noble thing indeed and a very time-consuming uh, thing as well. Well, it sure is. But, but for me, it's definitely a calling. It's something that I'm, I'm supposed to be doing. Well, there you go. That's a good way to approach it. So, and this is a different election. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about because, as we were mentioning in the break, it was kind of a whirlwind of uh, things that happened during qualifying. Once uh, we saw, of course, Richard Rains had made his uh, his uh, intentions known early that he was going to uh, not run for election, then run for the state senate, and then once you had uh, John Page jump into it, it kind of. Uh, I mean, they all happened very fast. Did, did you see that coming? Did it happen fast for you? I mean, uh, it definitely happened fast for me. I, I wasn't thinking at all about running for office in in this election cycle. And um, so uh, John Page vacated his seat on a Friday, and the Azalea Festival was a Saturday, oh, Sunday, right. and then uh, we qualified on Wednesday, so <laughs> it was very fast. Yes. Now, you, uh, and you run for a county commission chair for, um, in the last time. What... Uh, what about serving on the county commission attracts you? What would you like to see done, uh, as, and what made you decide to take this effort? Well, what made me decide to, to run this time was this is an opportunity I never thought that I would have. I never considered um, running for this seat. Uh, it runs on the same term as the chairman's, and that's the seat I ran for last time. So when this came open, it was an opportunity that I could have for service that I didn't think I would have. Um, so that's why I'm running. Gotcha. Now, you, and by the way, you do serve on the uh, plan, um, the zoning board. I, I do currently serve on the zoning board of appeals. I'm uh, serving my second three-year term, gotcha. um, and that's an appointed commission. That's a deciding body, and and what we do there is we decide um, people who need variances on their property or for any reason, whether it's the size of a sign or how close your uh, shed is to the property line. Uh, that's what we decide there. And those uh, things often come with a recommendation of the zoning board to the county commission. Oh, oh no, we are deciding. Oh, I'm sorry, I take that back. The planning commission is a recommending body, Thank you. but the zoning board of appeals is a deciding body. So what we decide is what happens. Gotcha. There, I'm glad you made that point. But those are the kinds of things that do come for the county commission. So that did that give you a lot of insight into the inner workings of the commission? Well, um, what has given me inner workings of the commission is having gone to the last five years worth of meetings. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you missed that five years? Not many. Uh, probably um, a half a dozen. I don't yeah. miss very often. Yeah. Um, once in a while, I, I'm out of town visiting my children or something. But right. uh, mostly I'm here and mostly I'm videoing. And mostly I'm making those available for other people to see because I think that transparent government is very important and that people would have a lot more confidence in the government if they understood it and they could see it happening. 
Do you think that is a big issue that we, and of course we get a lot of calls, people dissatisfied, really more so with the federal government and state really than I think local, but uh, having that kind of transparency, why is that important? Well, I think that if you even looked at the newspaper today and the headline is zoning hearing held down in Lake Park, um, the communication in, in local issues, if, if builders and developers were, I understand that they want to have, you know, a competitive advantage over somebody else, um, but also they need to work with their community and, and property owners have property rights. Current people living around the lake have property rights. They are invested in, in their property. And, and so I think that communication among all the different parties would be a really helpful thing. And transparency at the governmental level would say this is exactly how the process works. And this is the way that you'll make your way through in a good way if you work with your neighbors and you work with the commissions. Um, I think that it could be improved. And because by and large, you go to a lot of the meetings, but they don't get a great deal of attendance of these meetings. Oh, oh no, they don't. Yes, very right. poor. And again, uh, putting these on the internet, or how would you? Well, they could be put on the internet. They could be live streamed. Um, I happened to be on Thursday evening at a place where I, I wanted to go to the Boston City Council, but I couldn't. And I thought, oh, well, if it was live streamed, I could just watch it here where I am, but right. it's not. And so that's a, uh, something you'd like to see done if you were elected? Uh, I definitely would. Gotcha. Um, tell folks about your background. I think a lot of people know you, but uh, tell folks what you uh, have done professionally. Okay, well, uh, I worked for about 20 years at the University of Buffalo. I'm originally from the Western New York Niagara Falls area. Um, and then I had a technology startup company with my husband in Austin, Texas. Um, and then I did some freelance consulting, and then we moved here, and now I'm a farmer. There you go. And you know I'm a farmer because I did the South Georgia Growing Local Conference this yes. winter. And uh, I think that uh, everyone knows agriculture is the largest industry in Georgia, and that's something in terms of jobs and, and economic development that we could really focus on here, either doing uh, local processing of foods um, or doing more growing or really focusing on what we already do well. And that seems that uh, the awareness of that seems to have grown in the last few years. I, I think it's so. evidence <laughs> well I think it's evidence by the you had pretty good turnout from the South Georgia Girl. We, we did have good turnout and, and there's a lot of interest and there's starting to be local food groups and so I think that's a place where we can grow our economy and get more jobs. We were talking earlier with a caller asking about the Georgia Grown program and that's been a, a big hit because I think people really do want to know that what they're buying is uh, grown by Georgia farmers. Well and the other thing is when we spend our money locally with local farmers and with local businesses, this stays in the local community. It doesn't go to a bank in Savannah and disappear from our community. Again, Gretchen Porterman is a candidate for the District 5 uh, open seat in the Lowndes County Commission. And this is a, a little bit of a different race because uh, whoever is elected in this election will immediately fill that spot. That's correct. As soon as um, somebody gets 50% plus one and yeah. is certified, uh, they will be sworn in. Gotcha. So that, uh, and this is, by the way, a nonpartisan race. That's correct. So, or, and that's a little bit different than the other ones as well. So, um, what are some of the other things that you would like to see done? Well, let me ask you because two of the big issues that have come before the county and have been talked a lot about in the county over the last year, number one is the pipeline that has been uh, the uh, Sable Trail Transmission Pipeline that's been discussed. Nothing has been decided on it. Of course, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission is looking at it now. What are your thoughts on that? I know you've been kind of vocal and active in that front as well. Well, I think that um, the commission has taken a good first step in, in the filing that they made with FERC, uh, but I think that they can take a second good step, which is to say that they're either going to make a resolution or an ordinance, and an ordinance would then be applied to any pipeline that came to our community to say in terms of how much insurance would the carrier have to have, because what typically happens is um, there's a shell company and then uh, that company declares bankruptcy and the local government, is, if there's a disaster, has to bear the cost of that. So they could make requirements um, in terms of insurance, in terms of depth, in terms of how far it has to be from people's homes. Right now it's slated to be within, you know, a few feet of people's homes and that's just not safe. And then have those... Um Requirements been made in other counties, am I correct on that? Um, uh, Colquitt County made um, a, a resolution, but no one has made an ordinance yet. Okay. The other thing that we could do as a region, I mean this does uh, traverse a large part of South Georgia, the counties could work together and say we're all going to do the same thing, we're all going to work together. And when we do work together, we're stronger. Yeah, absolutely. Now, and you again have been involved in this, has there been talk 
among other counties of, of doing something like that? Uh, that I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, that sounds like a good idea that they haven't been on the same page because it is a regional issue, as that pipeline down in Brooks County, Conklin County, Doherty County, among others here in the South Georgia area, as well as Lowndes County. So, yeah. um, but what are some of the other issues that you feel like are important to the voters? I know you've been out campaigning a lot. What are you hearing from folks in your district? Well, things that are important to people are they want to know that the money is well spent. Um, lots of people say, I want to be tax less. Uh, and, and then when we talk about it, actually what they want to know is how are my tax dollars spent? And are they spent wisely? Um, and, you know, I said, well, what, what would you cut? Well, that they don't know because we don't know how the money is spent. So, you know, having that transparency, then we can be assured that good stewardship is happening. Gotcha. So, and then, you know, there, nobody likes to pay a lot of taxes, obviously. That's, but again, I think you're right. If people say, okay, well, it's going for this. And when you talk about the county budget, and of course they're going through that budget process right now, uh, that's a pretty big deal. I mean, that's a, you're covering a lot of different departments. Well, well it is. And, and think about right now over in Alabama, Mississippi, they're having some giant disasters. And one of the things that the county government is, is there are first responders. There are 911 center, there are fire department, there are sheriff. Those are the people that we're going to need should a disaster happen here. They don't come for free. We have to pay them and we have to have good quality people. So, you know, that's when we're thinking about what do we get from our county government? That's something that we get them. <laughs> well, let, let me ask you, because you, you run before, is it different this time? Did you learn anything the first time that you ran that you are applying now or is it a different process? Um, it, it, it's easier because um, you sort of know what you're supposed to do um, <laughs> and you're not as shy. So um, you just can't be shy. You have to just say, well, this is what I'm called to do and I'm going to do it and, and it is easier. And it is a big district, of course, you ran for it's county council chair, but first time, so it was the entire county, but this District 5, which is one of the super districts, and I, I constantly remind folks that you really, it's kind of a good setup because you really have three people in the county commission representing you, of course, the chairman, and then your individual district, and then the overlay of the super district, so. That, that is very important point, Chris, because so many people say, well, I can't vote for you, and I say, well, half the people in the county can vote for me, <laughs> so probably it's a 50-50 chance that you can vote for me. Um, they don't really realize that they do have two commissioners, and, and basically the districts go three of them east and west and two of them north and south. Yeah, so uh, again, know uh, what you're voting for when you go to the polls. We've been asked about having a sample ballot, but it really depends on where you live as to who you're able to vote for. So. That's correct. So, uh, but if you do know that, that does help the process. But so. you can get a sample ballot if you go online to sos.ga.gov and pick that My Voter Page MVP. Mm -hmm. um, and you can type in your name, and birth date, and county, and it will show you the sample ballots for the Democratic, Republican, and the nonpartisan balance. There you go. Um, again, uh, Lance County has experienced a lot of growth in the last you know, 10 years, 20 years, however you want to do it. What do you see as the future of Lance County? What do you see as some of the obstacles that are going to have to be tackled, but also some of the potential that's here? Well, there, there's a lot of potential here. Um, one of the things that people are really focusing on now is what's the mission of the A-10s and what will happen to Moody, who yeah. is our largest employer. But, but with Moody, we also have some really other great things. We have VSU, why Wiregrass Tech and Georgia Military to bring young people up and even non-traditional students up to um, new levels of education. And then we also have South Georgia Medical. And I think that that's sort of a gem, especially with so many rural um, hospitals closing, that that becomes even more of a destination. And, and I've said this before, I think that we could really build on the, the hospital and become a healthcare destination. All big parts of the game, the, all those things you mentioned, military, education, the health care, uh, big and what they, the services they offer to the area, but also the job they offer to the Absolutely. area. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, so, and, uh, and they all can work hand in hand. I, I find often you, you get this idea, I think, from citizens that, well, you can't have one without the other, but you, if you think about it, you really can have all of them work together. Well, you can have all of them to work together, and I think that that's one of the things that I'm, I'm trying to keep my eye on, is that things don't have to ever be adversarial. They can be collaborative and collegial and friendly, and and that's sort of where I want to go. I, that's the kind of commissioner that I want to be, approachable and, and available. Speaking of being approachable, we always like for uh, candidates to tell folks how uh, they can get in touch with you. Again, we're now three weeks from today is the election day, and uh, if uh, folks want you to come speak to them or just get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Um, my cell phone, which has been in the newspaper and is everywhere, <laughs> uh, my cell phone number is 229-834-1945, or you can find out more about my campaign at GretchenForLowns.com.
GretchenFamaz.com, and you can uh, give her a call and get in touch with her. She's uh, she's pretty accessible, I will say that, and, and always uh, um, able to uh, come on anytime we call you, which we certainly do appreciate as well. So, uh, Gretchen, good to see you again. Thank you for putting yourself up for public service, and it's going to be a busy three weeks, I'm sure, and maybe even before uh, longer than that. Again, with three candidates, the possibility of a runoff certainly is there, and uh, and usually is probable when you have three candidates. So. Well, it is, but thanks for having me. I really appreciate um, being able to be on. Good to see you again. Thank you. We're going to take a break and come right back. Uh, educators, uh, if you have an educator in your family, the folks from Bush Wealth Management are going to be here next hour to give you some uh, common questions they get involving educators and retirement, which is, I think, of interest. So I uh, will welcome uh, Kent Patrick and Greg Bright from Bush Wealth Management coming up during the 8 o'clock hour. Also, Sonny Schroyer is going to be here. He is Dancing with the Stars, South Georgia edition to raise awareness and money for the Alzheimer's Association. We'll be here next hour as well. we got more of the morning drive coming up right after this. On News Talk 105.9, this is WVGA. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, I think you get all the...